I am not gonna lie, I am so excited to do this video. We have not done a review in a minute, and there's so many books that I've read within the last few months in this fall season, and we just need to get into it. So, I'm gonna start with all the books that I read in September, as well as the books that I've read in October. Now, just keep in mind, there won't be spoilers necessarily. <laughs> But when I do say something that I count as a spoiler, I will give you forewarning. Just because there are certain things that we need to talk about in certain books, okay? <laughs> certain icks, certain triggers that really got me that we need to talk about. And I can't make this video without talking about it. And if I do talk about it, it kind of does spoil some things. So I'm going to give you a warning. Again, I will tell you exactly when I'm going to do it so you don't have to worry about ruining something if you do want to read this book. So let's hop into it. But first, here is a word from today's sponsor, Teddy Blake. They make these gorgeous Italian leather handbags, and guys, they sent me one. I'm literally so excited. I got the deep red croc one, and just look how stunning, stunning. And you can get your own too. They're having these incredible Black Friday sales where things are up to 90% off, which is absolutely insane. Like this bag, 90% off? crazy. So if you're shopping for the holidays or if you have anyone in your family that may love a bag, I highly encourage you to visit their site and shop the sale while it lasts because it's not going to last forever and you do not want to miss a bag like this. I'm literally going to wear this like all throughout December. <laughs> Thank you again to Teddy Blake for sponsoring this portion of the video. The first book up is Finley Donovan is Killing It. This is the first book that I read in September and it was a great way to ease myself into the spooky season. This book is about a single mom. She writes thrillers and she just went through a really nasty divorce. And let me tell you, that divorce was nuts. They do explain it. And I just have to say, maybe this is a little bit of a spoiler so I'm forewarning you, but she was entirely, entirely too nice to her ex-husband. This man, triggered this man cheated on her with her real estate agent and then she has the nerve to be nice to him in certain parts of the book what are you this would be my ex-husband okay my kids wouldn't have a father I'm, i don't know who said that um but i'm just saying just crazy to me but anyway it was a really fun book it was very lighthearted. the only reason why i gave it three out of five stars and not something higher is because i felt like everything ended a little too perfectly like there are certain situations that she got herself in and i was like there's no way she's getting out of that and then she did and i was like ah oh, that's not really realistic but it was just fun it was just like a very fun book to get into and it just set the tone for the rest of the season and i appreciated that so not bad not great either i think i would still recommend this to people but it wasn't my favorite then after that um i read and then there were none i initially rated this five out of five stars but y'all already know what i'm gonna say if you've already seen my short you know what I'm gonna say. But before we get to that, let me just talk about the book. And Then There Were None was a great thriller. I loved the old timey talk. I really enjoyed seeing different people's point of view. And like, it was kind of reminiscent to Lord of the Flies because you can almost see them shed the social facade as they get more and more afraid, as more and more guests start to die. And it was just so interesting to see like, the human nature of it, the human aspect of it, because that's really, I believe, how people would react in that type of situation. And it was so cool to see that demonstrated so well. And plus the ending, I genuinely did not see coming. I thought that was kind of nuts. And it was just very well orchestrated. I thought she was very thoughtful and it was ingenious. I thought the storyline, the plot, the idea, the structure of the story was really, really good. But, <laughs> but, we will not be reading any more Miss Agatha Christie. Y'all tried to warn me too before I started reading this book. I bought this book in one of the bookstore vlogs and I was super excited because again, I was mentioning that I'm starting to get into thrillers and I wanna read the best of the best. So I went to go look for an Agatha Christie book. I was recommended this one to start out. And even then, some people were telling me, I don't know, girl, if you read that original title, I don't think you're gonna wanna read it. And I didn't really understand what that was and I didn't really look into it when people started saying that. But then when I finished this book and I was trying to do research for my synopsis, like when I put them on Goodreads, I saw the original title and the original cover. Oh, and it just gave me the ache real bad. It just, it was like cold water being poured on my face. I don't know. I had so much high esteem for this author. 
And I understand some people will say like, oh, you have to separate the art from the artist or this was such a long time ago. Everyone was like that back then. That's not true. That is not true. Um, some people weren't. And I feel like you decide who you're going to be no matter what's going on around you. I know that's easier said than done sometimes, but certain things, certain fundamental human decency things, I just can't take the art from the artist type of thing situation. I can't have that mentality, especially as someone in the minority that she's talking about or someone who's directly affected by that type of hatred. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. We will not be reading any more Agatha Christie. I will be leaving this in a free library. In my short, I threw it away, but obviously I took it back out. I will be leaving it at a free library just so that I'm not wasting a book, but I will not be reading anymore and it will not be in my library. <sighs> After that little traumatizing event, I had to read something comforting. And what's more comforting than my girl Bella and Edward? Oh, this still is a five star for me. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. A win is a win. <laughs> a win is a win. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. Listen here. This still hits. And I read this. If you didn't see it already, I did the whole Twilight vlog. It was so much fun. I will link it down below so you can watch it. But while I was reading it, I was also listening to the playlist. Ugh, oh, and it just put me in my feels. It just brought me all the way back to like middle school and high school when I initially read this series. And it was just so nostalgic for me. I absolutely loved it. Now again, as I mentioned in the vlog, you know, they're not my standard for love anymore. When I was a child, it kind of was, and that was problematic. But now as an adult, having learned a lot and like grown more as a person, I understand that their type of love wasn't always the healthiest display of that. And that's an understatement because it was kind of nuts. It was a very unhealthy attachment, but that's besides the point. I think it's okay to enjoy stuff like this when it's not your standard for life. Like this isn't my love standard. This isn't what I'm looking for when I'm looking for my future husband, Jungkook, okay? <laughs> this is not what I'm looking for, but it's just the nostalgia of it. You know what I mean? It's just the feels, the fantasy. It brings you back to your childhood and stuff like that. That's all it is. And it, it was just a good time. It was a good time. Still a five-star read. Yes, I'm 1 billion percent biased because the writing, if I'm being honest, wasn't that great. What? However, it still meant so much to me and I will be finishing the rest of the series this year if I can. If not, I will continue to read it next year and I'll continue to make the video series for that series on the channel. If you guys want me to do that with more series, let me know. I feel like that could be really fun. Leave a comment down below if that's something you want me to do and if so, what other series do you want me to read? Now at this point, spooky season is in full swing so you know I had to follow up Twilight with Frankenstein. This was so freaking good. It was my very first time reading the original text by Mary Shelley and I gave this four out of five stars. Oh, for so many reasons. I don't even know what to say. Honestly, I think we all kind of understand Frankenstein and we've all kind of grown up with Frankenstein or the idea of Frankenstein. So if you're like me, you kind of thought that he was like a brainless monster. He was really heinous and disturbing and murderous and things like that. But the book just showed you a completely different perspective of this character. And oh my God, I did not see this coming whatsoever. At first you meet a lost sailor and you realize later that it's the scientist Frankenstein. And he talks about how much regret he has for creating this monster and how villainous and evil and disgusting it is. But the twist is you also get the perspective of the monster he created. Now he doesn't actually have a name, but of course we all call him Frankenstein, even though that's the name of the person who created him. And to hear his perspective and to see how like he was born into this world, he didn't ask to be here. And from the moment he breathed his first breath, he was hated and considered disgusting and villainous. And I just feel like that that could be an analogy for so many different minorities or like people who feel other or less than or maybe not accepted. And it was just such an interesting perspective because I did not expect to go into this book thinking of it as more of a philosophical thriller than anything. It wasn't horror, it was just like very philosophical for me. I just felt like I thought of a lot of things differently and I absolutely loved the ride. It was so good. I liked the language of that time and I just genuinely had a good time. At first it was a little slow, but then it picks up and then you really, really enjoy it. This was a great read. I feel like I need to read this every spooky season now. Really enjoyed this. Then next up is Silent Patient and this was so good. So good. I... I can't believe it lived up to the hype. You guys have been telling me to read this for the longest time and you were not wrong. So freaking good. 
I don't even know what to say about this. First of all, let me just say five out of five stars. Let's just start with that. If you haven't seen my 24 hour reading vlog where I was reading all the spooky books, this was the first one I read and my reaction stands to this day. To this day, it stands so freaking good. But let me just explain why. So this book is about, okay. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Okay, this book is about this lady who kills her husband, right? And then she goes silent for years. She doesn't talk to a single soul, not even to herself. She's not talking to nobody, okay? And then this psychotherapist devotes his life to helping this woman start talking again, right? And it just follows that narrative. And man, it was absolutely a wild ride. First of all, this man, Alex, he's an amazing writer. All the wording was so descriptive, so in your face about the details and at first it was kind of slow but then it picks up and all the details make you feel like you're in the story i felt so fully engulfed in this story i was fully there with him trying to figure out what was wrong with her trying to figure out why she wasn't talking to people trying to put the clues together and it was just incredible i could not believe how invested i was in this story and that rarely happens for me in thrillers because one or one or two things happen First thing is, there's way too many facts and then you kind of just get detached from the story and you don't know where it's gonna go and you, you kind of don't really care anymore, at least that's for me. Or the second thing is, it's like too obvious and then you figure it out anyway. Or even sometimes it's like you don't see it coming but you weren't really invested in the story. But this was not the case at all. I was completely hooked from the beginning and that ending did not see that coming. I felt like even in my wildest dreams, if I was thinking of a shock value ending, that was not what I would have expected, okay? That was just so nuts. I was thinking about this book days after I read it, and that really happens too. So I was very, very excited to read this. I'm so glad that you guys made me read this because it was definitely worth it. But this is where there may be a spoiler, so just giving you a heads up before I start talking, this may be a spoiler to you. But this book, the thing that it left me with the most, or left me thinking about the most, is the fact that some people can be the nicest people, the most caring, empathetic, have been through so much you want to be empathetic towards them, and they can be the most evil, heinous people. Even if something has brought them to this new version of themselves and, you know, they have like a villain origin story, I think that is what's terrifying about this book. Because me wholeheartedly reading this until the very end, I was like, man, this guy has been through so much. I'm so sorry for him. Like I'm rooting for him. Look at him taking care of his mental health. I'm so proud of him. He's devoting his life to other people who have these mental health issues because he knows what it feels like. And then for him, that was the jump scare for me because I really believed he could do no wrong. Like I was willing to fight for this man, fight for him. And then he had me clutching my pearls. That was crazy to me. That makes me so cautious in the real world because you just never know. That is terrifying to think because I think we feel safe when we think, oh, this guy looks scary or this girl looks scary. I can see them being a serial killer. If you ever had to be in that mindset, let me just say that for a warning. But then for the nice, innocent people, you just never think that. And that is terrifying. That is so scary. What the heck? Nuts. That was the real jump scare, okay? Got me looking over my shoulders. Nuts. After that, I read The Maid. This I gave three out of five stars. This book is basically about a girl. She's a maid. She works at a hotel. She works day in and day out. She kind of has a mundane life, but she doesn't mind it until her grandmother passes away. And then she just works just so that she has something to do. Um, her grandmother basically raised her, so it was kind of hard not having her. But when she goes into work one day, she's accused of a murder that happens there at the hotel. And then she just has to prove her innocence throughout the rest of the book. I thought that premise was really good and I really enjoyed like trying to see how she was going to get out of this situation, but I didn't necessarily love this book. The main character was supposed to be a woman on the spectrum, but I felt like the author kind of made a caricature of someone on the spectrum and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I just didn't feel like it was a great representation of someone on the spectrum. So that's why I kind of didn't like that, but I also do enjoy the basic plot, the basic synopsis of this book, and I thought it was decent. I didn't see the plot twist at the end coming, so that was nice. But I don't think I would read it again. I don't know if I would recommend it. I just thought it was okay. Now, these are the six books that we read in September. We did so good. I generally read about four to five books in a month, but baby, we read six, so I'm pretty proud of this. This is not a bad pile. Very nice. 
Then next up are my October reads. So I started that off with The Hunting Party. This was also in the 24 hour spooky reading vlog. This book is about a bunch of friends that go to a cabin in the middle of nowhere. It's freezing, it's the dead of winter, it's about to be New Year's, and someone ends up dying and you have to figure out who did it and who died, basically. I don't know, I gave this a three out of five stars. Lucy Foley does this thing where she has a ton of different POVs and sometimes it's nice, but I think that, you know how eating sweets is nice after a meal or after a long day or you just wanna treat yourself? Like that's nice. But if you're eating desserts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, then you're gonna get sick, right? That's how I feel about her writing style. I know that's kind of harsh, but like I feel like she overdoes it with the POVs. And I think she does things sometimes just for the shock value alone. And that's like, ugh, it's kind of, exhausting so that's how i felt about this book i read the paris apartment before i read this i read that a few months ago and i just expected this to be different because i heard that this was better and i do think that i liked this book better than i liked the paris apartment but not by much i think i rated them both the same three out of five stars besides the fact that you figure out who killed the person you also have like this twist at the end about like what happens and that was like ugh, i don't know the ending wasn't very satisfying for me and that was kind of annoying i was just like Okay, but I'm realizing I'm thinking that it's a lot harder to like the characters in her books because they're usually all morally gray, even if they're not necessarily the quote unquote villain. They aren't likable people either, and there were so many unlikable characters in this book. It was almost nauseating. Sometimes I'm like, they're just all fake friends. It was nuts. And I understand that sometimes that's done on purpose so that you intentionally hate these characters, but all of them, there's not a single likable character in this entire book. That's nuts to me. Like, give me something. Give me a little carrot or something. I don't know. It just wasn't a book for me, but it wasn't bad. Again, it wasn't bad. I do think I like this better than The Paris Apartment, but getting into this fall thriller season, I really did expect more, and this kind of fell short for me. But you know what didn't fall short for me? Educated by Miss Tara Westover. This, let's just give her a round of applause first. This book was just phenomenal. For a memoir, it couldn't have gotten better than this. It couldn't have been better than this. I gave it a five out of five stars, obviously. Oh my God, this book was just nuts, like in the best way, in, in the most heartbreaking way. Now I took your advice and I listened to the audiobook as I read this book and that was just such a great decision because I loved hearing that voice and the extra depth of emotion at certain pivotal points in the book. And it just made me that much more empathetic towards this woman. She has survived so much. It's almost unfathomable. Like I, I can't even comprehend the things that she went through, the traumatic events that she went through and to be this completely different person outside of that, like in the best way, I mean, like to have grown so far from that, to take that trauma, that tragedy and make it something that is your strength and your superpower is not easy in the slightest. And she, is an incredible human being. Wow, this book just left me like awestruck. I could not believe someone could go through something like that over and over and over again and to find yourself through all of that trauma. But I think the most important lesson out of this book is the fact that when you're healing from trauma, that journey is not always linear. I found a few comments when I was looking at more information about Tara and there were some people who were saying like, why'd you keep going back to your family? If they were so abusive, if they were so bad, why'd you keep going back? But if you have never gone through an abusive relationship or a situation, you can't understand how difficult that is to just completely break free, especially when that is all you know as your concept of love. So of course she kept going back and if you've ever gone through anything, it was something that you could relate to and I could relate to this story. Not only does it make you proud of her for overcoming what she's overcome, but it also gives you the permission to give yourself grace because if you've ever been through a situation, sometimes you may be embarrassed or disappointed in yourself for going back to an abusive situation or for not doing the right thing completely when you're in a bad situation. But this just shows you like you're human, you're figuring this out too. If this is all you've ever known, it's hard to understand what you deserve and what you don't deserve and what's okay behavior and what's not. And she just so perfectly explains that and I was just so proud of her, proud of her growth. And this girl, she is smart, got degrees on degrees from like the best colleges. And she started from nothing, didn't even graduate from high school. And she was able to get degrees from Oxford and Harvard. Like 
she just shows you that anything is possible it's beyond inspiring it's beyond motivational but not only that i feel like it's very soothing for the soul if you've ever been through something or you're trying to currently get through something it's a great way to see that you're not alone and it's okay to not have a perfect linear journey through your trauma or through healing i just absolutely had such a great time reading this book it was hard to read it was sad it was frustrating it was infuriating i was appalled disgusted but i was also so proud of her and like i felt like i went through a journey with her just listening to the story reading the story and i just couldn't have been more proud of her and i will read whatever else she has because she is such a phenomenal writer and just so perfectly explains like human emotion to a point where even if you have no, no like higher education or like understanding of certain things she just explains it so well so i really enjoyed this highly highly recommend if you've ever been through anything or if you're ever going through something currently what? or if you're currently going through something that's what i meant very 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 good highly recommend after that i read divine rivals on my kindle i gave this book a 3.75 out of 5 stars initially i really really loved it the story is about this girl she works for a newsstand and she writes about this war that's happening in her world and when she goes there she immediately makes an enemy out of this guy who's also vying for the same job that she is and so each week they're both submitting papers to see who's going to get this position at this news place and that was really cute you know i am a sucker sucker for enemies to lovers and they gave that not super intensely but it was enough to like pique my interest there was no spice the storyline was very wholesome and it kind of gives you a peek into the war and like why they're fighting and stuff like that but the main allure i believe for this book is the fact that they wrote letters to each other back and forth and that was so beautiful there's just something about a handwritten letter that shows that you really genuinely care about that person and it always pulls at my heartstrings so that was something that initially really gave me a lot of pull towards this book but i will say i think that's all this book offers at first i was like oh my god this is going to be a five star i even talked about it in my goodreads posts but then i realized as i continued to read it's all very surface level like the letters are deep and they're talking about like loving yourself and healing through certain things and being there for someone that you love all of that stuff is very deep but it was like perfectly curated by the author to be that way it felt like besides the letters back and forth there's not much of a in my opinion plot to stick to because the war i felt like we could have gone more into the details of that and also i understand that this book is a book in a series and you have to continue reading it but i just felt like it fell a little flat for me towards the end because it just kept giving the same kind of energy you know it, I, I didn't feel moved to be more invested in the story than I already was. And that was kind of disappointing. But the thing that really made me start ticking off points, not excessively, but like took me aback a little bit, was the fact that, okay, this might be a spoiler, so another warning. <laughs> but the fact that towards the end of the book, this is where you stop, by the way. If you want to read this book, don't get mad at me for saying what I'm about to say, because I gave you fair warning. Anyway, but towards the end of the book, when she finds her brother that she hasn't seen in six months, doesn't know if he's alive or dead, hasn't gotten a letter, nothing from him, she's already lost everything else. And they were so close growing up, right? Tell me why <laughs> she gets one little stinking gosh darn mother freaking husband and forgets about her family. It was a rush situation, so they couldn't really embrace the way they should have. But when everything settled and they were in that woods, and she was talking to her brother the way she was talking to him? I don't know. That was crazy to me. Crazy. You're telling me you guys were thick as thieves when you guys were younger. This was your first best friend, the first like real love of your life, like in the most wholesome way. And then when you see him, you ain't got no love for him? I just think that's crazy. If I haven't seen my sister or my brother or someone I love, even my best friend, even my best friend, we can hate each other. But if I think that she might be dead for the next six months and I see her again, no matter what's going on in my life, oh, best believe we're gonna ugly cry together for at least an hour. And she just did not have that energy for him. And that just gave me the ick real bad because I was like, you gonna let one little boyfriend, one little husband make you get clouded judgment to where you can't even see what's important, your family, your blood? I don't know. That was like, what? That was crazy to me. So that's why my rating kind of went downhill from there because I just couldn't relate to her anymore. I, I couldn't excuse that kind of behavior. I don't know, it just it just gave me the ick. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I just didn't really 
feel as invested as I initially did, which is disappointing because I really did think it was going to be another five star read and it just wasn't, but that's okay. I think it's okay that it's that book for other people, but just for me, just how I am as a reader, maybe who I am as a person, it just didn't hit the same as I wished it had, but I'm not mad that I read it. I feel like it was still a good read. I still enjoyed myself. I still wanted to know what was going to happen. So that's all I can really ask for in a book. Then I read Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Again, I did listen to the audiobook while I was reading that, which was very nice because they did like different voices and it was just really cute. It like made me care about the story a lot more too. But I did give this three out of five stars. It was okay. It was like a fun read. It was kind of like the Finley Donovan is Killing It book. It was just a fun, light, spooky read. But I will say again, let me just tell you the synopsis before I go into my rant because I know I'm about to talk for at least three, four, five minutes about this thing that I want to talk about. But anyway, this book is about this guy who wakes up every day as a different guest at Evelyn Hardcastle's party to see who murders her. And what I really, really enjoyed about this book, let me just tell you, I love that when he woke up as this new person, he had the skills of that person. I just thought that that was very unique. That's not something I expected when he was waking up in someone else's body. I just assumed he would just be in a new avatar. He is still him mentally. He is still his own person. But no, in this book, this author takes the take that he has his own mind, but he's sharing this body with the original inhabitant. So he has their skills. And I just thought that was very, very cool. I did not expect that. That is something that I enjoyed so much in this book because you got to see how he acted differently or how he saw the same scenario differently through a different lens of a different person. And I think that just makes me think of life in general because you can see a certain situation and think of it in one way based on your experiences, but someone sees it a completely different way. And I just thought that was very cool. But <laughs> I will say the only thing that I didn't like about this book is first of all, it was very long. I didn't feel like it needed to be that long. We got the point halfway through. I felt like we could have cut out some of his existential crises crises out of there and it would have gave the same effect and I probably would have liked it more but the thing that got me I don't know these books these last few months have been very triggering <laughs> because I just don't understand it I just don't understand the thing that got me was the fact that okay spoiler alert this guy ends up working with the lady who tortured and killed his sister that he was super close with, right? And she's in like hell for 30 years, which I understand 30 years is a long time, but not long enough if you're murdering and torturing my sister, my flesh and blood. And the fact that he becomes like best friends with this girl and she's cha- I was flabbergasted. Gosh darn it, I will say it, I will say it, I was flabbergasted. I don't care if it happened to me, maybe I would have forgave them. You know what? It's been 30 years. You've been living this horrible situation for 30 years. You know what? Let's shake hands. Don't ever talk to me again, but I don't hate you anymore type of situation. But you murder and torture someone I care about? My flesh and blood? My little sister? You must be out your mind if you think that he vouched for her. He vouched for her. It just, it left me in a stupor. I could not understand. And he was like, she's different now. She's not this murderous villain anymore. I don't care if she became Mother Teresa. You murdered and tortured my sister? You don't stay here. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna save you. I'm not gonna help you with anything. I hope you relive this day for at least a thousand years. Then we can talk. It was only 30 years and all of a sudden they're best friends skipping out of the story. I just, I couldn't understand that. I could not understand it. Um, more power to him though. He's better than me, obviously. But that was just something that left me completely shook because I could never. Maybe I have more work to do, but that was nuts to me. Now, we made it to the last book and last and unfortunately um, least, I read Mile High by Miss Liz Tom Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave that a one out of five stars for so many reasons. Let me just break this down for you because I just know she has some stands and y'all just, someone needs to tell you. Someone is lying to you and I have to tell you the truth because it is not what you think it is. It is not amazing like you think it is. I'm sorry. I have to be the one to tell you. But I will say this. Let me just start off with the positive. 
Liz Tom Ford, she is an advocate for mental health for not only women but also men. All of her books are about uplifting women, knowing what you deserve and what you don't deserve, having a man that treats you like the queen that you are, and vice versa, you treating that man as well as he needs to be treated as well. And that is beautiful. That's like a great message and thing to advocate for in all of your books. But that's all she has going for her. If we are talking about the actual writing, <laughs> laughable, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, someone has to tell you. It is not good, it is not good. Girly, wake up, it's not. It was so atrocious. She made by a thread almost like Shakespeare. It was just so much worse than I would have expected just because I was going into it thinking that it was gonna be better than her last book. And it was just so bad, it was so bad. It, but my biggest gripe was the fact that these characters were both black main characters. And let me just preface this by saying, I don't think there's anything wrong with Liz Tom Ford being a white woman writing about black characters. I don't think there's anything wrong when someone is writing about a minority or a group of people that they're not directly related to, as long as they do the proper research on those people. They need to talk to the people who are actually within that group. They need to have those experiences, that knowledge, that just basic research to really use your platform to uplift that minority that you're trying to talk about. And it was just so evident that Liz Tom Ford did not do that whatsoever. Like to the basics. All she did to make the reader understand that Stevie, the main character, was black was say that she had curly hair over and over and over and over again. It was like comical, it was so insane. And I could tell that she did no research on black women and black hair whatsoever when she said, this is the part that triggered me. And one of the parts in the book she was saying like, oh, I haven't washed my hair in like five days. It's so dirty, it's so... <laughs> what? Any black girl, anybody with even a tan who has curly hair, knows that you're not supposed to wash your hair more than that anyway. I personally wash my hair every Sunday. So once a week, once every seven days. And my hair couldn't be flourishing more. And the fact that she like made that little, I don't know, it wasn't a dig, I, I understand that, but like it just gave me insight in the type of preparation that she did for this book. And it was nada, there was nothing. And then on top of that, I didn't even realize the guy that she was in love with, the guy main character, sorry, I blocked it all out, but the guy, he was supposed to be black too. This whole time I was reading, halfway through the book, I was thinking he was a white guy with tan. I don't know why, like, she gave no indication that this was a black man. But I figured it out because I had to do, <laughs> I had to look up who Liz Tom Ford was. Because for me, when a book is really, really good, or really really bad I need to look up who wrote it because I just need to know who I'm either praising and saying you're an, an absolute genius and who I'm side-eyeing and I had to look her up because I was side-eyeing so bad I just couldn't understand how she was making a living as an author writing this type of stuff like it's not even the fact that it was over smutty because it was it was just the dialogue the conversation how everything was explained like <laughs> I can't even, I can't even get in, <laughs> I can't even get through it without laughing. The whole time I was reading the book, I was laughing, cracking up because the dialogue was so cringy. It was like, it was like if Wattpad found the worst writers to write a smutty book, it was like their Olympics. It was just so insane and I, it was comical it was comical but i understand the baseline when you take off all those other ridiculous layers the baseline what she's trying to get across is really really good and i advocate for those messages and i agree with those messages but that <laughs> does not mean that the writing is good and baby let me tell you the writing was not good at all i will never read another thing by miss liz tom ford i gave her a chance twice at your request, by the way, at your request, it was just so bad. But the fact that she wrote two black main characters and the only thing that indicated to me that Stevie was a black girl was her curly hair and the mention of her skin being black like twice throughout the book, that's egregious to me. Like if you're gonna do something outside of a culture or a group that you understand to a, a cellular level, you need to do it 
the correct way. You need to do the proper research. And she did not. She just thought, yeah, black main characters and just started, <laughs> just started typing. It was insane. It was so, it also told me too, by the way, that she doesn't have a single black friend, not a close one at least, because nobody warned her. Nobody told her like, hey, like talk about the culture a little bit or talk how we talk or like, not even like stereotypically, but like talk about our foods or, or anything, nothing. There was no indication. If you took out the curly hair references, and the two references of Stevie having brown skin, you would not have known that was a black main character. And I did not know that the guy main character was supposed to be black until halfway through. And that was because I found the animated cover of the book and saw that he was supposed to be black. And I was like, wow, news to me, like complete jump scare. That whole book was just a train wreck. It was so bad, but again, I understand her baseline message and I agree with it. I advocate for that. But we need better writing. I'm sorry. It, that, that was nuts. That was a crazy way to end the fall season. But I will say, all in all, we read some decent books. And I'm so excited to get back to, like, different types of genres. Because that was a lot of reading about murder for me. That was just so much. And I'm still trying to currently get through American Psycho. And that book is a whole conversation on its own. I don't even know how I'm gonna get through that one, but we're gonna try to make it through so then we can read some nice fluffier reads throughout the rest of the year. But that is enough yapping from me. Thank you so much for watching. This was a lot. There are a lot of high highs and a lot of low lows, but you stuck through with me and I love you so much. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.